um, Monty had asked me to do this part of um, our Bible study. It's a lot of information for one person to go through. And um, let's get started. I have a lot to cover. And uh, of course, he um, saved the interesting stuff for me. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just ask you right now to please bless my efforts here, Lord. I ask you to cover everything I say. That which is not of you, Lord, take it away. And that which is of you, I ask that you would open eyes, Lord. Help us to see your truth and for it to bless us in our life, that we might understand the days we're living in. Thank you, dear Lord. Amen. Okay, so, Monty left off um, last week. Revelations 9, 1 and 2. And he went through those and um, talked about the meanings of the words. And some of the things that he was talking about was the angel that went to the bottomless pit and um, opened the, the gate to the abyss or the bottomless pit and smoke poured out now later on in those verses it goes on to expound about the smoke and I think that is relevant to what I'm going to talk about so I'm going to read the rest of that those verses the fifth angel sounded and I saw a star from the sky which had fallen to the earth. The key to the pit of the abyss was given to him. He opened the pit of the abyss, and smoke went up from out of the pit, like the smoke from a burning furnace. The sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke from the pit. A lot of words to say. The smoke poured out, and uh, it darkened everything. But why? I mean... How could it darken everything, the sun and the atmosphere? So if we read on, it says, Then out of the smoke came locusts on the earth, and power was given to them, as scorpions of the earth have power. They were told they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those people who don't have God's seal on their forehead. They were given power not to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a person. In those days, people will seek death, and they will not find it. They will desire to die, but death will flee from them. Okay, so here we go. This smoke isn't just ordinary smoke. It's filled with these locusts. Later on, in a couple of more chapter uh, verses, it tells you that these, these locusts were strange because they weren't going to eat anything green. Well, that's the whole purpose of locusts coming. They destroy the crops and um, the people uh, go into a famine because there's no food. And it's, it's quite devastating from what I understand. Well, these locusts don't touch any of the herbs but they're to harm people but they're not to kill the people they're only to torture them and to torment them so this go the reason I wanted to read this part of it is because it is direct correlation to what I'm fixing to tell you the part that um, Monty asked about the question uh, what would cause what would shake your faith to its core well if you thought that there was extraterrestrial life out there somewhere might that not shake us to our core because the Bible speaks from beginning to end and except for the um, occasional messenger of God that that uh, comes to talk to us we're not told of any other living anything anywhere out there but Monty and I have researched this quite a bit, and we think that's the great deception of the end times. That many, many people are going to be deceived into believing that extraterrestrials are um, coming to Earth, and that they're um, going to have these powers because, in actuality, they're the fallen. What the Bible 
refers to as um, the Nephilim, the fallen ones. In Genesis uh, 6, which I'll read to you, it, start, it talks about them. And it's a really strange story, but you have to remember, we're the faith that believes in um, people talking to God. We're the people that believe that from eight people, the whole earth came, all the populations. We believe in the ark. We believe that the whole earth was flooded. If we believe every word of this book, God's word, Jehovah God, then we already believe what some people would consider some pretty strange things. Well, there's a verse or a couple of verses in uh, Genesis 6 that um, has a really strange story and it's oftentimes just kind of skimmed over because it, it is so strange. So let's get into it. Let it speak for itself. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days and also after that when God's sons had come in to men's daughters and had children with them. Those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. So this is talking about after population had grown and it said that the Nephilim, which comes from the word, the Hebrew word Nephal. Now this isn't the only place that it talks about it in the Bible. Because remember, we're two or more witnesses, and we've got quite a few. In Numbers, uh, it talks about after Moses had brought the people out of Israel, and uh, they came to the valley of Ishbal and cut down from there a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they had to bear it on a staff between two men. They also brought some of the pomegranates and the figs. This place was called the Valley of Ishbal because of the cluster which the children of Israel had cut down from. At this time, there was something going on in the earth that um, caused God to say he's not going to strive with this, this flesh of these people. And then he tells At us this, this time, story there was something about going on in the earth. The sons of God. Well, who are the sons of God? the sons of God in other places are referred to as the angels okay because we have to remember Adam was a son of God but every generation after that was a son of Adam because God didn't blow his breath into us we were created through them so we're a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy throughout the generations okay but there were these creatures that were created with God, the angels. And these angels are referred to over and over throughout Scripture as the sons of God. Now, this verse is telling us that these sons of God saw that the daughters of men, or the Adam, Adam means man, were beautiful. And so they took them as their wives, and they knew them. And they had children with them, and those children were called the Nephilim, the fallen ones. It's very strange, very strange story. So what could this possibly be talking about? Okay, it said that goes on to say that Noah was um, perfect in his generation. Well, we know there was only one perfect specimen that ever walked this earth, and that was. Yeshua and or Jesus um, so we know it wasn't talking about his character or his sin life but what was perfect perfect in his generation well is he talking about in his DNA in his genetic makeup what had happened to these angels that came down and mated with women the fleshly women what did they create? Because angels are a spiritual being. And we live here in the flesh with a spirit indwelling us. But what was created through them? Well, the Bible says that the Nephilim 
were created. Now, some people interpret Nephilim to mean giants, as in the five Bobom giant. But um, if you take the Hebrew word here, it's not exactly that, it says. Uh, the Greek Septuagint, which was developed around 250 BC, first uh, took that tact of the text, the giant or gigantic. It took the Hebrew word Nephilim and translated it into the Greek word Gigante. In Hebrew, however, Nephilim is a play on the root word Nephal, and Nephal means the fallen or to fall upon. So, the Nephilim referred to as the fallen ones. Well, what are they fallen from? There used to be a book in the Bible, in um, the Apocrypha in, in our generation, called the Book of Enoch. If you go to Ethiopia, their Bible in their uh, Catholic Church still has the Book of Enoch. Well, when they found um, the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls in Qumran, they also found a complete text of the Book of Enoch. Just so happens that the Book of Enoch tells us some really great things about this, this time before the Flood and this time of the Nephilim. Now, I'm not sure how I stand or where I stand on the whole thing of it being canonized because it's canonized in the Ethiopian church, but I do know that it was referred to and mentioned in the New Testament as if it was a well-known book so I think it's historically a good book I don't know if I would put it up there with all the scripture and give it that much weight but it is very interesting and you know gives you insight into some things that the Bible assumed I guess later on that everybody knew because this was such a well-known book you know before it disappeared but he tells us um, about these demonic spirits that came and that when they did come down, when they fell from heaven, what they taught men, the different one, different people were in charge of different things and that um, God condemned them to the abyss. But their children remained on the earth and they were the Nephilim and these children of theirs supposedly uh, were the, the stories of old. Every culture uh, across the world has stories of giants. They have stories of um, the Titans. They have stories of um, the Philistines that were Can the Canaanites. When, when uh, Ca uh, Caleb and Joshua came back and they were supposed to give a report to Moses about... Um, going in to the the land that God had promised and they said we're as grasshoppers against these people well supposedly these Nephilim anyway, were very large so these large people the book of Enoch tells us they were bloodthirsty people they were evil people and it also refers to that if you continue to read uh, Genesis 6 it it tells you that these were evil people now I know some scholars teach that these um, sons of God that they're referring to are Seth's children who supposedly became very evil but why would he denote the seed of one mixing with the seed of another if it didn't have something to do with them not supposed to be mixing together it's just kind of obscure you have to look at it yourself I hope it sparks your interest in it but back to the delusion delusion being that I believe our society right now, our government, a lot of people that, that are in the government, I should say, our education system, our entertainment system, I don't think they're like meeting in secret places and planning anything, but I think they're all being led by the same spirits that are causing them to um, promote an idea that aliens are out there and that one day they're going to come. 
and uh, I think that demonic activity right now is really high in the in the world that we live in because the time is short and they want to keep as many away from the faith as possible and so I think they're going to be tricked people are going to be tricked into believing that these demonic spirits are actually aliens and that they're going to buy into this lie this delusion and because they rejected the truth of God it says that God will give them over to a strong delusion and that he will but it allow them to believe this lie because they know, chose a lie for people right now truth. because I know there's a lot of people that talk about having abduction experiences or sightings of aliens it's gone up in the past 10 years something like 300 percent like that's that's amazing who you can't discount everybody as being crazy I mean some of these people that that believe this stuff are um, educated people and and people that never wanted the spotlight or, or to be any part of it and now they're they're having to tell their story and be ridiculed for it so I, I don't think all of these people are lying I believe they're deluded they're deceived and I think it's sad because it's something the church ignores in one respect they don't want to think that this story from Genesis about Nephilim and giants and spirits mating with women and causing this destruction has they, they can't buy into that that makes them look not intellectual well in doing so they're missing out on an entire portion of the spiritual world that is gaining control of this world more and more each day. And it can't just be that these people were just really sinful people back in Noah's day. Because if just sleeping around homosexuality and um, murder was a reason to like flood the world, sorry people but we'd have been flooded a long time ago so there had to be something really really putrid in the nostrils of God 